Might as well talk about uh, Impact now, since we'll talk about the pay-per-view on Sunday. And I want to talk about the pay-per-view and then go backwards to Impact. But uh, what an irony that the show opened up with Angle showing up in a football jersey. Football! Indeed. Why a man of his capacities and capabilities would put on a football jersey? That's absurd. Jay Lethal and Havoc. Dueling chance for some yes. inexplicable reason. <laughs> People were chanting for havoc. Yeah. Daniels came out to watch, and uh, here's why I hate TNA. Here's another good example. Daniels comes out to watch, and Mike TNA goes, What's the story with Daniels? And I thought, okay, if even I know that Chris Daniels is facing Jay Lethal at the pay per view, I should punch you, Mike TNA. Why do you have to make this more difficult than it actually is? This is the one fucking thing on the entire show that made sense. That Daniels is out there scouting his opponent, and Mike Tanay had no idea why. So, Havoc was taking flip bumps for Lethal, who outweighs him. Actually, Havoc outweighs him by 75 pounds. He's still taking flip bumps for him. They did a botched move, and then uh, Havoc, uh, Havoc kicked out at three after the flying elbow. That was a good one. I also like Havoc hit basically a suplex, then... He turned Lethal in midair and dropped it into a stunner. And Don West screams, Great counter by Jay Lethal! And Lethal just lays there and Havoc's up walking around. Everyone's confused. The story of this match was so completely ridiculous. And we had a... Uh, it's a two-minute match, by the way. Two minutes. <laughs> Thank God we got two hours here on this show. Karen showed up. She was having problems with Kurt. What a shocker. People are mad at each other on Impact. Angle came out with the belt and the jersey. No IWGP title. I have no idea what happened to it. So the reason he did what he did to Sting's son was because Sting had hit his wife, number one. And number two, he wanted to face the old Sting at Bound for Glory. He wanted no excuses. Blah, blah, blah. Called out Sting. Karen came out instead. She explained that uh, how dare Kurt go after Sting's children. What if Sting had done after their children? She said, Kurt went too far. He crossed the line. He said, I determine when I cross the line. They argued back and forth. She said something about how she'd said something about a slap or some such bullshit. I have no idea. I, actually, I do. It's going to make you angry. Okay. All right. Karen says, I never should have gone along with your plan to say he slapped me. And Kurt said, no, no, shut up. He did slap you. So here's what this means. Kurt Angle set a trap for Sting. I don't even want to think about this, so just tell everybody else. Kurt Angle, months and months and months back, went out of his way to win the tag team titles. I think from Joe. I think he won them from Joe in a singles match. Then he went out of his way to, to, to choose Sting to be his partner. In fact, I think Sting had to win it. <laughs> Angle had to set up a match that Sting could win, so Sting could be his tag team partner. Then Angle decided he wanted to wrestle Sting. So he set up a plot. A plot wherein he would trap Sting into appearing to slap his wife. Then Angle would pretend that he didn't know it was... He, Angle would pretend he thought it actually happened. Then he would be angry with Sting, so angry that he would go to California to harass no, 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 Sting. You're missing a point. So angry that he would hit Sting with a move in a match, causing the two of them to right. lose yes. their tag team. Yes, yes, I didn't that, forget that part. He went out of his way to hit Sting with a move in a match, to lose the tag team titles that he had gone out of his way to win. Yeah. Yes. Now, keep in mind, this is all his plan. Yeah. It's all going the way he wanted. He then flew the way the fuck out to California mm -hmm. to harass Sting, to harass his Sting's son. Why? Did he want revenge? No, because he knew Sting didn't really slap his wife. He just wanted a match with Sting. <laughs> what? It makes no sense. This he couldn't have walked up to Sting and said, I want to fight you. I'll put my belt on the line. And Sting would have said, okay. And they could have spent a month building up with promos with Angle saying, I've beaten Hunter. I've beaten Rock. I've beaten Austin. And you know, Sting saying, I beat Hogan. I beat Savage. Now we're going to fight. And it would have been cool. No, I don't care. I don't care. Vince Russo probably decided it makes no sense that Angle doesn't know that Sting didn't hit his wife because he would have watched the replay. So we'll pretend that he does know. Which makes the entire rest of the storyline so much stupider than having us just believe that Angle didn't watch the replay. <laughs> Actually, yes. I don't know. So anyway, 
Sting, thumbs down, everybody. Sting appeared on the big screen and said he was holding them both responsible. And then a uh, Sting dummy fell from the ceiling and Angle attacked it, and it was not really Sting. And I guess this was supposed to embarrass Kurt. I don't know what this was supposed to accomplish. This was supposed to wear out his uh, his ankle locking arm. They wanted a dummy for some reason because it was cool in 1997. That's all I can figure. Plug the pay-per-view. Borash met with Nash, who we've now seen every single human being under contract on the last two shows. Nash went to talk to Sting in the rafters. Now, we need to point this out here. When you say went to talk to Sting, Nash went to the bottom of the stairwell and called out, Hey, Sting! And Sting appeared. Yes. Three minutes before this, we had seen Kurt Angle demanding to know where Sting was. Hey, Kurt, he's up. He's up these stairs. <laughs> Should also point out, while Sting and Kevin were having their friendly conversation on the stairs, it was silent. Apparently, they cleared out all the fans for this talk. Yes. It's time for Sting and Nash to have a chat. Everyone, please be quiet. Nash told him not to be so crazy. Sting said, well, what would you have done if Fangle would have went after your child? And Nash said, I'd kill him. Actually, he said, what if you had gone after Tristan? Yes. So apparently we're supposed to know that Kevin's Nash has a son named Tristan. Yes. Okay. Nash said he would kill him. Sting said that's exactly how he wanted to go out. I guess as a killer. Also, all we had seen, every time Sting's name had come up, we had seen Kevin Nash say, he made our lives hell for a year in the NWO. So you think, okay, Kevin Nash and Sting are enemies. That's fine. So then Nash calls out Sting. Sting says, hey, Kev. They meet halfway at the ramp. Well, they're friends now. This was 97. They are now friends. I'm thinking, what the fuck is going on? Which actually, they should still be enemies because it's still 1997 in TNA. <laughs> and then, deep in the, 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 the unused portion of my brain that I would have liked to have left unused, there's this little nugget of info that says, weren't Sting and Kevin in something called the Wolfpack at one point? And I guess that's what they're building off of. So now they are friends. Mm. They, 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 Matt, uh, Russo watched a different episode of 97 Nitro this week. Wow. Maybe he's got WWE 24-7. That would explain a lot, actually. That actually would explain a lot. They've had to... Oh, then we had Team Pac-Man vowing to beat up Triple X. Pac-Man is getting more comfortable behind the mic True. in his last week. Team Pac-Man versus Senshi and Alex Skipper. This was... Last week I was okay with the Pac-Man stuff because I thought it was creative. This week it was just stupid. He can't touch anybody. He spiked a football in a Senshi's groin. Legal. Uh, which was legal, yes. And not only did he use a foreign object, but he low-blowed the guy with the object, which was legal. Legal. This was not a DQ. So uh, then uh, Killings tagged in and um, made his own comeback. And Pac-Man ended up throwing money into uh, Skipper's face. He made it rain. Mm-hmm. And Killings hit the axe kick and got the pin. It was a completely offensive segment in every conceivable way. And then Pac-Man gave money to the fans, because I guess he's a nice guy, and it was all $1 bills. <laughs> I didn't even notice that part. Yes, I So, did. yes, uh, <laughs> there was a point in here where Pac-Man came in and did a move illegally, and therefore he held up his hands and said, whoa, 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 stop there. You are not the legal man. You return to your corner and you wait for a tag. And he did. Because if there's one thing Pac-Man Jones is known for, it's a healthy respect for authority. Yeah. This man does what he's told. Well, that's the point. Yes. That's the point. Oh, my God. And also, it's been like three months. Why are Triple X back together? We still don't know. <laughs> they broke they, apart. They just got put back together. They just got put back together. Yeah. Okay. Duh. Duh. So then uh, out came the Steiners. Scott said he hated Team 3D, and he couldn't wait till Bound for Glory. Told them to bring their fat asses out right now. Uh, so they didn't come out. Steiner continued burying him. And then uh, Don West screamed, This Sunday's going to be awesome! To the back! To the back. So they went to the back, and who was Borash interviewing? Yes, Team 3D, who had just been called out but didn't come out. They did their promo backstage instead. Then the uh, Steiners came up and attacked them, and it was dumb. Bubba Ray Dudley compared himself to Britney Spears here. He did. And when I said that, I mean, he said he was a drunk, fat alcoholic. I'm not exaggerating. Actually, I think he said that uh, about the Steiners. He said they were washed up and useless like Britney Spears. Mm. I think he went on to talk about excess body fat and alcohol. But anyway. I don't know. So then the Steiners came up. The Steiners. Rick Steiner and Scott Steiner came up, and they wanted to kick somebody's ass. <laughs> Who was there to prevent them from kicking said ass? Why, Chris Saban and Alex said the Motor City Machine Guns. Oh, yeah. Chris Saban had two hands in Rick Steiner's chest and was stopping him. Yeah. By himself. Tough man. This was nonsense. Shooter. Shooter. 
Nash was ranting at Curtin Kern backstage. Something about if Angle had done that to his kid, he'd want to kill him. Kurt said it was Nash's kid, or it wasn't Nash's kid, so he had nothing to worry about. He said the kid hit me first. Karen, Nash has Karen to talk some sense in him. This is so dumb. I, I don't even know. What anyway, happened. the point is Nash was like, "I'm gonna bounce. I can't take this anymore." And off he walked. And I was like, "Are we supposed to care?" <laughs> Has it been established at some point that Nash and Kurt are a, a, a great, strong unit, and that it's now a bad thing that Nash is going to bounce? Who cares? All I wrote down here is Angles, Angles dash Kevin. It says nothing else, <laughs> and I have no memory. No. This this segment apparently sucked. So then we had the actual, legitimately the best segment on the show. Yeah. Gail Kim and Amazing Kong. I should note they also had to throw out all the other girls. Christy Emmy, Jackie Moore, ODB, Talia Madison, who is hot Fuck and yeah. who I need to see more of. Angel Williams and Roxy Laveau. Um, Gail is very small. Amazing Kong is very big. They said 6'1 and 280. She manhandled Gail, completely destroyed her, and powerbombed her with a pin. All the other girls were terrified. Yes. And uh, this was so great. See, when you say, I don't know why the other girls were out there, they were out there to be afraid of Amazing Kong. That's fine. Yeah, I, I was totally there. cool with most of this. This is a horrible debut for women like ODB and Talia Madison and Angel Williams. They just walked out and then walked back. Yes. <laughs> that was lame. But for, for, for the established DNA girls to be out there, that, was, that, was, that part was awesome. And, yes, Amazing Kong killed her. She was big and strong and scary. And, 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 and I mean this in the nicest way possible, ugly. <laughs> and, and it established her as a big, scary, dominant heel. And I was stunned. <laughs> I was struck dumb when she actually won the match. Because this is TNA. And I figured Gail Kim would make a comeback and hit her finisher and win. But no. Well, they can very easily screw it up on... Um... Hey, there, there is still time. But for one day, they got this right. In fact, they, they actually screwed it up here. Because, to be honest, the way I would have done it is Amazing Kong would have killed somebody else. Like, uh, I don't know. Christy? Jackie Moore. Actually, did I say Jackie Moore because I had a better uh, okay, debut yeah, match sure. with her? But uh, then Amazing Kong wins the title on Sunday, and she's the monster. And you build up to Gail getting her big title match against her, which would have been great. <clears throat> but anyway. Well, I, that would have been better. I'll probably screw this up by Amazing Kong also not winning on Sunday. Yes. That would have been better than what they did, but I will say what they did was not wrong. So, yes, thumbs up. You know, they also could have done was, was not debut her on the show, and she would have just... They would have had all the girls come out for the Battle Royal thingamajigger, and she would have been the last one and just fucking destroyed everybody. Tossed them out, won, and uh, a star is born. But uh, they didn't. But this was still the best thing on the show. Clips aired from uh, Don West's interview with the Guru. It was horrible. We're here with the Guru, Sanjay Dutt, while he's meditating. We're going to try to see if we can interrupt him for a second and ask him a few questions. <laughs> <clears throat> Hey, I'm Sanjay. Guru. Uh, hello, Mr. West. Hi, Sanjay. I want to say I love you here, and I love you being here today. I, I love you too, Sanjay. W w what brings you here? Oh, well, Sanjay, we, we've got a lot of questions. The fans and I, we'd like to know this, this noticeable change in your life. What, what, what's this all about? Well, Don, I, I realize that we must become the change that we want to see in the world. I realize that an eye for an eye makes the whole world go blind. And there's people out there suffering. There's starvation. There's people that need my help. There's people that need my voice. And that's why I'm here. The Ebola virus epidemic that's running rampant through the Mid-Atlantic and Nairobi. I'm here to help. Sanjay, I've never heard of this Ebola virus, Nairobi, Atlantic thing. Well, that's precisely my point. The fact that you haven't heard of them means that you can't help, that you can't love. But that love only goes so far, Mr. West. That's why I need your wallets. I need everybody to help. That's why I'm soliciting donations here for the Guru Humanitarian Fund. You want, you want money right now? No time like the present, Mr. West. Let's see what I got here. I go sitting on my wallet. I got, how about that? I got a couple bucks. As little as 50 cents can save a child. Yeah, uh, the children are going to love this. The cause is going to love this, Mr. West. Please, would you mind joining me in a meditation? It'd be my honor. Close your eyes. Repeat after me. Breathe in the air and feel that. Somebody, I don't know if it's 
Don or Sanjay, but someone or other thinks Ebola jokes are funny. Damn. They kept making Ebola jokes. Don didn't even know what Ebola was. He didn't yes. I, live in a, I think I live in a bubble. So uh, they meditated, supposedly. I use that term loosely, and then it, it sucked. And the guru wants money. So then we had clips from The Orient. Don't yell at me. That's the way they termed it. The Orient. Tom Cohen, Giant Bernard, defended the IWGP tag titles. And then we had uh, Chatting with the Champ, which is a wacky new skit with Christian, who is not, in fact, a champ, if anyone noticed. Is that with AJ Styles? There was a low-rent Raw skit. Joe came out. They argued about their match on Sunday, and it ended up uh, erupting into a brawl. And in the end, uh, AJ tried to hit him with a ukulele, which failed. That was so great. Joe destroyed him. Matt Morgan pulled him out of the ring and then ended up with Joe and Christian in together. And Christian hit him with a coconut. Yes. Which is also proof that Vince Russo is watching WWE 24-7. Which they referenced here when, when, when Joe pointed out those coconuts there and said, The snooker thing? Yeah. Because one thing you're not allowed... In TNA, you must always reference legendary wrestlers, but you must never use their first names. Yes. Funk. Snuka. Snuka. Yes. Then we have the generic blonde chick interviewing LAX and the Latino Nation, who have returned. Uh, I very much miss uh, Conan, just so I throw that out there. It was fine. Homicide is fine. Conan is, in fact, better. The Latino Nation is a bunch of Latinos with bandanas, for those of you wondering. P. Williams and Robert Roode. P. has a complete body. He's significantly smaller. They had a pretty good match for the three minutes or so that it lasted. Uh, then we had... Uh, you know what I hate about TNA? <laughs> a fine move there about eight seconds. I just remembered this. They did a... Tracy Brooks is out there, and they did a spot where she interfered. And you know what it led to? Why? Nothing. Right. Why would you do interference just for the sake of doing interference? Who wants to see interference in a fucking match? Nobody. So if you do interference, it's best if it leads to something. She interfered and it led to nothing. It did not lead to her man getting the heat. It did not lead to the pin. It did not lead to the other man getting the advantage. It just existed because somebody thought it would be cool to have her interfere. So anyway, P. Uh, <clears throat> Went nuts, set up for the Canadian Destroyer. Rude pinned him clean with the Fisherman Suplex. And Rude uh, beat him up afterwards and wanted Tracy to hit him. She refused. He threatened to fire her. So Kaz ran down to make the save. And then uh, Rude pulled her out of the ring and, and demanded she go with him. And poor Petey, just an afterthought. Not even an afterthought. They showed him in the corner, so cowering, beaten. Yes. He was punked. Sucks to be him. That sucks to be him. This was... As good a team in a match as, as you know you could see, and P, I like to congratulate because he he had to get in his the, the springboard run onto the floor, but at least he saved it for the comeback this time. That's good. He's been known to do that in like the second move. Yes. JB was with Kurt looking for Sting in the bathroom. He found Rikishi. Horrible television. Kurt, I really don't think this is a good idea. Kevin said Sting's really pissed off right now. I know he's pissed off, but I'm kind of pissed off too. What the hell am I whispering about? Just follow me. A moron. We won't. Right here. If you want to find a piece of crap like Sting, it's the first place you look. Oh my god. Oh my god. Can I help you? Uh, no, 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 wrong guy. Oh my god. I'm gonna throw up. You ready to destroy it? Abyss and Rhino against Raven and Black Rain. <laughs> you know, we just somebody was on the board. Talking about great minds and TNA that, that could uh, be booking, and they mentioned Jim Cornette, and then they mentioned Raven. And God bless Raven, but Raven has a much higher opinion of himself than I think is, is probably deserved. And the fact that he was in this match shows that he can't possibly be that smart. They're building up a Monsters Ball match on Sunday, so what do they do? A no DQ hardcore match that involved thumbtacks. Raven giving a DDT to Abyss into the thumbtacks face first, so that the thumbtacks went into his face, forehead, and cheek. Right. And it was a transition spot, you see. <laughs> yeah. It was not the finish. No. They did this move. There wasn't even a pop. And then the match just kept going. It was there in a three-fucking-minute television match. <laughs> yes. Because Abyss must take a face up in a thumbtack once a month. It's in his contract, apparently. 
He must do something stupid to his body. This made me so mad. I could. I, I, I still be mad at this point. I just. I, I just <laughs> why? <laughs> I, 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 mild curiosity, I would say. I'm, I'm beyond anger, because that would imply that I care one way or the other. I'm, I'm mildly curious as to why. What made them think? I'll take it a bump and a thumbtacks on this match here on 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 free TV. Plus, as we mentioned, as I mentioned last week, they did this match, and it's like, okay, now you got to pay for Monster's Ball. Hey, you see everything. What more could I possibly want to see? I just saw a guy take a DET face first and thumbtacks. What are you going to give me on Sunday? And come up with thumbtacks in his face. Why would I, I possibly you. care? Why would I watch this and want to see more? I don't know. I don't know why Raven and Black Rain started fighting at one point. I don't know. I know Abyss and Rhino started fighting, but at least Abyss was allegedly blind at the time. I don't know why there was a near fall here that completely snowed Don West to the point where he was talking about the match like it was over. I don't know. I don't know anything about this segment. Rikishi, Junior Fat 2, did a promo. He said he smelled something foul, and what he smelled was their next interview when he was asked about an upcoming title shot. If anybody can translate that to me in English, I would be very appreciative. Then we had generic blonde interview chick version 2 interviewing Matt Morgan. He called her Crystal. Apparently that's her name. He said Jim Cornette had appointed him to be the special and for tonight's main event. And then this is what he said. He said his job was not to keep Sting out of the ring. His job was, in case Sting ran in, to make sure Angle couldn't get away. He did say that, didn't he? Yes, he did. I don't think that's much of an enforcer at all. That's a... An allower. What do, you, what do you call someone who who, who helps an alcoholic? Who can watch this show and think, boy, I sure hope Sting interferes in this match. An enabler. Enabler, thank you, yes. Matt Morgan was not an enforcer. He was an enabler. Well, the good news is... He doesn't stutter anymore. Yes. <laughs> I, 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 I spend about 0% of the time focusing on, on the content of what, what he was saying. And just focused on his delivery, and I remembered, holy crap, this guy can talk. No shit! Yes! So, yes, TNA, congratulations. And, and by giving Matt Morgan one promo, as idiotic as it was, you've made more use out of him than WWE ever did. Yes, that's true. Good job, TNA. Thumbs up for that. LAX and Rikishi versus Team 3D and Kurt Angle. Matt Morgan is special. I put special announcer. <laughs> eh, may as well have been. Errors. Said, uh, and we never talked about what he said. So, anyway, they, uh, they went to commercial early on. And when they came back, the announcer said, here's what you missed. And we missed, seriously, about a half dozen different things. <laughs> we missed a lot, as it turns out. <laughs> the, it, it, LAX, Morgan, the flag, the Latino nation, all of this we'd missed during commercial. <laughs> wow. Yeah, no, yeah, I didn't write it down, but now I think about it. I, I remember the, the Latino nation being thrown out. I forgot about the flag. I forgot about the heat. I forgot about the interference. But, yeah. And Morgan. And Morgan. Today was then going on, plug in the pay-per-view, and going nuts about how we were going to see, and I quote, the return of the reverse battle royal. Yes. Yes. This is supposed to draw you in. This is supposed to sell this show to you. I understand nostalgia. <laughs> I understand people. In fact, there's an argument on the board about how great the wrestling in the early 90s was. And, of course, when... I challenge people on this. They mentioned all Japan. <laughs> no shit! But anyway, people like to romanticize about certain periods, and and uh, you also get the problem where really stupid shit in the mid-90s is looked back upon as, as being great, when in fact it was horrible at the time, it was bad for business, and it's still horrible today. And um, that's the story of Vince Russo's life, really. Never learning a goddamn thing. They're looking back on the reverse battle royal like it was a success. Yes, and you know what's worse? There's never been a bigger failure. <laughs> I shouldn't say never, but it, it did is. win the worst match of the year in the Observer Awards. Did it really? Everybody with a clue buried that fucking match, and they look back upon it fondly. So fondly, they're trying to sell. They're trying to sell it yeah. as a selling point of their biggest pay per view of the year. <laughs> it's great. Yes. Now here's the thing. There is something to be said for nostalgia. People may forget that Mantar really wasn't a very good wrestler. <laughs> they may think it would be fun to watch a 
Justin Credible will come out with a jock strap on his head again and go, yeah, it's Aldo Montoya. Woo! The reverse battle royal was like six months ago. <laughs> a year ago. A year ago, whatever. It's very recent. Yeah. It has not yet had The stink is still in the air for the reverse battle royal. And yet they're selling it. Reverse battle royal. Homicide had Angle pinned. Yeah. Sure, why not? Well, but the ref was out of position, and then Kurt hit the Olympic slam for the pin. Angle is defending the world championship against Sting on Sunday, and they had Homicide yeah. get a visual pin. I, I, it's, it's so stupid, I bet almost nobody even noticed it. I, 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 I say again, I don't even care about that kind of thing anymore. I, I just watched it, and I thought, wow, I'd like to see Kurt Angle versus Homicide one-on-one. That'd be fun. Well, that's not what we're getting. I know. So then Angle grabbed the mic after the match, said it was now time. He'd beaten up Sting, demanded he come down. Sting appeared on the big screen, told Kurt to settle down, said he was going to wait for the pay-per-view. Then he said, maybe not. And suddenly behind Kurt was a member of the Latino Nation who unmasked, and it was Sting. And he uh, proceeded to put Angle in the Scorpion Deathlock. Angle tapped immediately. The show went off the air. It was fine. It was a good idea in uh, on paper. I don't know if it was exactly that uh, great in execution, but what the hell can you do? I, I, I don't see them. I, I don't see this as a, a pay-per-view that's... I will predict 25,000 buys, which is actually up, because I think it's their big pay-per-view of the year, and I think that I think they're going to do 25,000, which I'll probably look like an absolute fool afterwards, but I don't see doing anything more than that. I, I see it as every TNA could do ever. 1-1. One, 1-1, one. One, one, everybody. Yep, nothing's... They got two hours. 1-1. One, one. Things are turning around.